Hi, this is Scott Romero with Martin Archery. And, uh, you know, we're all in turmoil right now with the quarantine. So now's a good time for me to do some tuning videos, especially on our new target model, the NXT. Uh, here I have, I'm getting ready to set up my backup, uh, Axon 39 for 3D. And uh, I have my primary Axon 39. I can't, really words can't describe how good this bow, I mean, I've been shooting professional archery for a long time. And this bow is the best bow I've ever had, as far as tuning, arrow flight, uh, 12 ring. I mean, you can have a bow that, that shoots great, but if it doesn't consistently hit 12s, then there's an issue. It's either in your shot or it's in your bow, in your arrow, some kind of setup issue. This bow finds a 12 ring, a lot. So with the rangefinder shooting out to 50 yards, uh, when I was practicing hard, I, I've kind of hung it up for the last couple weeks. I didn't want to wear the bow out. Uh, I, this bow was averaging eight, nine, twelves out of ten targets for the rangefinder, and then judging, it was either in the twelve or in the vicinity of the twelve. Judging, which is the ideal 3D setup, especially in the, any pro class. So I'm going to go on a step, multi step by step videos on how I'm going to set up my backup bow. And my goal is to try and get my backup bow just like my primary. The only difference is I'm running threads, which is what we ship with all our bows on my new backup bow. And then my other bow has gas bow strings on it. Bow, same limb deflection, same brace height. Uh, so I'm gonna just go through the setup on my bow and hopefully through those videos, you guys will know how to set up the NXT. It's, this bow is so adjustable from person to person that the way I do it is may not be ideal for you, but it'll give you a starting point and some options on how you're gonna set it up. So the first thing I did with, my, with this bow, and I'll just talk about the one in my hand, is uh, I set the bow up a little heavy. So this bow actually scaled out about 72 pounds, and I didn't wanna shoot 72 pounds for 3D, I wanted to shoot about 67. So what that did is I allowed me to go ahead and flip the precise weight technology shoe, and I reduced the bow five pounds. When I do that, it does lay the limbs back a little bit. I gained a smidge of brace height, but since this bow shot so good that way, I wasn't gonna change it. And, you know, even if it's a mental thing, okay, I gained 16th to 16th of an inch of brace height, who cares what it is? If it's mental, whatever gives me confidence of full draw, I'm gonna do it. So I set it up just like this. I ran on a thin side, the bow scale out about 66, 67 pounds, just like the other one. Uh, I set my mods up on the same draw length. So you can see here our mods are numbered one through seven. Now, ideally, we'd have a draw length. One is we use similar cam systems on multiple models, so that wouldn't work because they all have different draw lengths. Two, there's a lot of patent rights on how we number cams and royalties and all kinds of different issues. So we just number our mods one through seven, knowing that each setting is a half inch of draw length seven being the longest draw length, one being the shortest. So on four, on the 39, I'm at like 29 and three quarters, depending on how I set my stops, uh, which is my draw length. It's between 29 and a half and 29 and three quarters, just depending on my setup. Uh, the other feature we have too is, you know, we have our mod stops now. You can run it with the mod stop out of the track, which when we ship a bow, there is nothing, you can see here when I lay this Allen wrench in here, it's not touching the mod stop. So the cable would just lay in the track and would never touch the stop. Oops. Uh, but after you get your bow, you can loosen the set screw on the top and you can slowly work that mod stop into the track. I have prototype mod stops on my primary bow, but the factory new mod stops, you can see the laser engravings a little bit tighter, a little more consistent. And so all the bows that are shipping now are with this laser engraving. Some of the other cool features, uh, we do have a set screw that goes in our limb barrel, so you can lock your limb bolts down once you get your uh, optimum poundage. I went ahead and just, I'm running my limbs all the way down, and so I just lock a set screw down on the top and on the bottom. The other thing you can see too, with our rad weight system, I'm running the aluminums in the top, steel with aluminum caps in the bottom, that's how they're shipped. But if you look at my bow and slide over here, that's my sight cover for when I'm shooting unknown. Uh, you can see I stacked about three ounces of weight on my left side to counterbalance the bow and to put some more weight in the bottom. 
Another cool feature about my primary bow and my secondary bow is I'm running the aluminum pocket in the top and I'm running the brass pro pocket in the bottom. So what we've got here is we've got a plumb bulb effect of three ounces hanging out the left side of my riser in my rad weight system. And I also have another third of a pound of brass pro pocket weight in the bottom of my bow. Uh, using the carbon Martin rad carbon cable rod system, that's a hollow tube. It actually flexes at full draw. And we now have an offset piece this year. So I'm running the offset piece. And one thing I noticed is, and I'll, we'll talk about it more when I get into the, to the setup of my secondary bow, is when I relaxed the cable guard, it took a little bit, it took all the left hair out. I had like a, maybe an eighth of an inch. You know, it was, a, it was a bullet hole and then it wasn't a bullet hole. And then, but when I relaxed the cable guard just a little bit, it cleaned it right up and it tore a bullet. Uh, there really isn't anything else to really go over as far as the setup on the bow. But before I get into it uh, on the next video, I do want to show you how the mod stops work and how the limb stops work on my primary bow. So I shoot a thumb trigger for competition. I do play with back tension every now and then just to kind of keep me honest and, to, and I hunt with back tension. But when I shoot competition, I shoot a thumb button. Uh, if I was a back tension shooter and I was competing back tension, I don't even know if I'd use the limb stop. I would probably just use the mod stops. These, the factory mod stops that we're shipping now, you're getting about, you can get about 17 pounds of holding weight with a 60 pound bow. It increases, of course, as the bow goes up. We are making a secondary mod stop that'll be out uh, hopefully within the next month or so, where it'll actually be less let off, so you can hold closer to 20 and lower poundage, but we're gonna gear that more towards uh, indoor season, but it will be available. But I'm gonna cycle the bow one time. I'm gonna show you how it hits the mod stop, preloads, especially on the top cam. So it'll engage my mod stop a little bit more on the top than it will the bottom. And then I can feel that. When I, when I go into my, my shot side sequence and I draw the bow back, I can feel it hit the mod stop. And if I didn't have them in there, the bow would roll over kind of hard and quick go right in a limb stop, almost kind of like a high let off bow. This bow's holding 17 pounds. Uh, but when you engage the mod stop early in that, you're, it's a, you're changing the curve from the let off point. So it kind of rolls over smooth, almost feels like a round wheel bow as it goes into the limb stop. So I'm gonna cycle it. That'll be the end of this video. Uh, and then on the next video, I'm gonna go into setting up my loop and then we'll actually shoot the new bow through paper and do some speed checks. And you'll see the cam cycle and then you'll see the bus cable come around and actually engage the mod stop. I can't tell you how nervous I am right now because this bow's so perfect. And I have it on the draw board. So there it is, it's hit, the, it's hit the mod stop on the top just now, and I can feel that when I'm drawing it. And it hasn't, it's kind of touching the bottom, but not completely. You can see where now it's starting to engage it more. And if you go over and look at the limb stop right here, you can see how all right, I've engaged the mod stop, but the limb stop hasn't kicked in yet. Then the limb stop hits and starts adding tension into my shot. For a thumb button, that's perfect. I know that my cam's in the same position every time. My thumb is wrapped around the button. I'm not engaging the button. I'm pulling on my release. That locks it in place. And then my pin steadies up and the bow fires. It's, it's an ideal situation, I think, for a thumb button. Now a guy that likes a little bit of sponge may not want the limb stop. But that's what's nice about Martin bows, is that we understand that a compound bow is not a crossbow. Crossbow can fit everybody in the family. A compound bow has to be adjustable. Everybody has a little different feel. And whenever you get a bow and it just has a mod or it just has a limb stop, you take, you take all the adjustability away from the person and you're stuck with it. This, you, instantly you can make the bow feel good and fit you. I've said it at the beginning, I can't say it again. This, I'm, 
I just can't believe that we're not shooting tournaments right now because you know this was the year I was going to come back and shoot. I don't want to sound selfish, but I finally got the best shooting bow I've had. I mean, I'm relaxed at full draw. I've seen some I've seen some target panic videos on Facebook and YouTube. Well, let me tell you what causes target panic. When you're wrestling with your pin. If you're fighting with your pin at full draw, you're going to anticipate the shot. There's no way around it. You want to have you want to be calm at full draw, relaxed, only thoughts of how steady your pin is right now. The pin has to be steady. The way you get your pin steady is you load the bow the way you want. I got a little bit of load in the top of the bow. I can set my stabilizers the way I want it. My limb stop, I can feel it start to tighten up into my trigger. And the only thought that's going in my mind is, where's the 12 ring? Oh, look how steady my pin is right now. That is just the perfect sight picture, boom, and then it fires. That's the secret to eliminating target pan. There is no release. There's no, you can blind bail all you want. There's all kinds of things you can do. But if your pin's not steady at full draw, that bow doesn't fit you and it doesn't feel the way it should feel, it's, it's an uphill battle. You've won the battle when the pin is steady. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to start setting up my backup bow and we'll go from there.